Hello? Testing? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name's Alyssa. Um, just a few announcements before we get started. We have a donation box by the front door for Pete and Danny's um, Navajo Nation clothing drive. They're needing some um, socks, beanies, hats, anything for the cold weather. Um, we've got Julie's class for women on Tuesdays at 6.30. I mean on Mondays, right? Mondays is the Zoom at 6.30. And then we've got um, donation boxes on the back if you feel um, led to donate. As you can see, we're having some plumbing services. So we thank you for all your donations. And then um, the Zoom for everyone is on Wednesdays at 6. Yeah, Rick and Stephanie at 6 on Wednesdays. And then Julie's class is on Mondays. Tuesdays. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have the Women's Seminar January 20th at noon, and that'll be in here. So bring a friend. Um, and I'm going to share a little testimony before we get started. So I went home to California. Um, none of my family is saved, but I took my sister, my 12-year-old sister, to church with my, well, actually, that's a lie. My dad is saved now. My dad became born again six months ago. So me and my sister went to church with him on Sunday, and we went down to the altar, and they were singing, um, they were doing a salvation prayer. And my 12-year-old sister, I look over, and she's reciting it. And so we get in the car, and I'm like, did you mean that? <laughs> did you mean what you were saying? And um, she said, yeah. And she said, actually, last week at a youth group, she prayed a prayer like that. And that was an answered prayer for me because I'd been praying for her to get into a youth group or to get some friends that believe in God. And her friend started taking her to youth group last week. So she received Jesus and believed last week. So in the car, I was like, do you want to pray to receive the Holy Spirit? And she didn't understand, but she said yes. So we prayed together, and then I kind of started to mention in her room, um, I saw that there was like sage and like a chakra poster, and I, I was saved out of the new age, and she had an evil eye. So I was trying to explain to her what it, what it means, and I had another sister on the phone with me helping to explain to her what that stuff does, because she just thought, she's 12, so she's like, oh, it's cute. I saw it at the store. I just hung it on my wall, and I was explaining in the nicest, easiest way possible about demons, not trying to scare her though, but like also the fear of the Lord. And so after like talking to her on the way home, um, I was leaving, I was about to leave back to Arizona from California. And I was like, hey, Michaela, like, did you make a decision about that stuff in your room? And she's like, it's in the trash. So just from talking to her about it, she threw it away and I went in her room and I looked and everything, it was off the wall. The evil eye bracelet was gone. The sage was gone. And I just started dancing and clapping and praising the Lord. So, um, thank you. Let's pray before we get started. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that you've brought to this place. We thank you for deliverance that is going to break out tonight, Father. We just um, pray over Brother Rick and thank you that his words are going to be anointed, Father. And thank you for everyone that you're going to set free tonight. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is here in this place, Lord. Thank you that People are going to come to this altar broken, Father, and ready to be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Testing, testing, and we're live. Good to see you, bro. All right. I lack a few things these days. Some things are added. I had two in one in the back-to-back -back days. So I'm getting my hair cut. My son's a barber. And he has to spend two minutes cutting the, the ear hair. Oh, and if that's not bad enough for the humbling, then I show up to work, and it was the second job site I was on. And I don't want to make excuses, but it was a little dimly lit when I put my shoes on in the morning. And I... They said, hey, bro, we might have been able to, you know, let some things go, but not wearing two different shoes. <laughs> now, they were both white and they were both Nikes, but I, I, I just had to own it and had to just laugh at myself. So there's some things I lack, but one thing I don't lack is some Holy Ghost fire. 
And so many people are trying to get something from God, and they don't have any fire. When you get to the level of the fire, God just starts burning stuff out. When you're in the elementary stages of walking with Christ, then you got to deal with all your issues, all your problems, all the negativity, all the word curses that were spoken over you, all the problems that, are, that lie ahead of you in this sin-stained world. But when you get the Holy Ghost fire, oh, now, now everything becomes a little better lit. The things, the opportunity, the hope, the things that God's called you to do, the anointing that he placed in you, the time and the season in which we're living in, you know, it all becomes visible. Oh, and you can hear better. Luke chapter 12, verse 49, he says, oh, I came to send fire on the earth. He said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring fire on this earth, and I wish it was already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I'm distressed until it is accomplished. There are multiple baptisms. Hello, that's what the Bible says. Jesus, or, or John the Baptist is describing Jesus, and he says, hey, one's coming after me. I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie his sandals. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's two separate things. When you're born again, you're baptized into the kingdom of God. You're, you're, you're taken out of the hands of Satan, the taskmaster, and now you're in the hands of God. It's symbolic when the Jews crossed over uh, the Red Sea. That was deliverance. You were no longer owned as a slave. You now were free. But now you have to learn how to operate as a free person. Most Jews didn't. They had to die in the wilderness. And you know what it says? The, them dying in the wilderness were our examples as New Testament Christians. You, most Christians die off with excuses. They die off with looking at themselves in the natural realm. They die off believing word curses or not dealing with the spirits of abuse in which were perpetrated upon you in your youth. And they never go to the lamb flowing with milk and honey. What's the lamb flowing with milk and honey? That's where you bear fruit and fruit that will last. The fruit that's tested by fire and comes back as pure gold. Amen. Someone believed it. Oh, there's elementary. There's elementary thinking. If you're going to get delivered, you, do you think you can, well, I went to Sunday school and I, heard, I, I said Jesus loves me. This I know. Praise God. You get in. You come in dumb. You come in spiritually ignorant. You come in blind. But when you come in, then God begins to do a refining. He begins to, as the master craftsman, beginning to shape and mold you and make you into the person that he created you to be and to do the works that he preordained for you before the earth was formed. I don't know if I got any talents. The Bible says he's looking for nobodies. He's looking for the weak. He takes the weak, shames the, tr the strong. He takes the things that are not to nullify the things that are. The noble men are, are scarcely saved. That's why I don't buy into celebrity Christians. I used to think, my, that's kind of a tough thing. You used to, don't listen to them. And I'm like, oh, now I know I do not listen to celebrity Christians, especially ones that are coaching college football and got girlfriends for the past eight years, the same girlfriend. Uh, no, self-exalting and self-glorifying, jewelry-wearing Christians. I won't follow them. I won't listen to them. I can't, I'm not going to say they can't do something for Christ. Christ uses donkeys. He, he, he does all kinds of things. I'm just not going to follow them. I don't believe they could help Holy Ghost fire. I don't think they could help stir up the gifts that, were, that I received by the laying on the hands of the elderships that had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But, hey, you do you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, he says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. There are elementary principles of Christ. Deliverance is the children's bread. So it's, you, you got to grow up and you got to ask. If you don't ask God for something, you don't get something from God. Jesus has drawn all men unto himself, but it takes someone that would believe in his heart and confess with his mouth that Jesus is Lord. It takes a preacher. How can they preach unless they be sent of God? It takes, he uses the human realm, but you got to have the foundation laid. He said, let's leave the discussion of the elementary principle of Christ. And what do you do? Then you go on to perfection. You got problems? Then you better look at the elementary principles of Christ to see if you got them implemented in your life. 
Otherwise, you're going to have problems all day long. You're going to be trying to put a square peg in a round hole, and it won't fit. Christians aren't built for this world. You're built to be a servant of Christ in this world. You're, you're built to glorify God. You're built not to store up your riches in heaven, but store them up, I mean, store them up on earth, but store them rather in heaven. You're built different. But what happens, you get bits and pieces of teaching that ain't right, and it ain't biblical, but it suitable for the lukewarm person they receive it they try to walk it out and what do they do they're never perfected so you got to leave the elementary well what's the elementary principles of christ it says there's a foundation of repentance from dead works it's the first thing that he names you have to repent from dead works what does that mean things that don't bear fruit for the kingdom of god you you, you need to you need to repent from them if it's not bearing fruit for god you got to let it go there's things I like to do. There, I did a little evangelism riding my, my motocross bikes at the, at the practice tracks, but 300 pounds ain't meant flying 25 foot in the air trying to clear the tabletop. That's built for 160-pound men. And so I'm suffering some damages to my body and surgeries, and the Lord said, hey, you got to let that go. You're going to beat yourself up. You're not going to be able to go preach. I've tried to preach with my ribs wrapped up one time, barely could preach. Another time I'm on crutches. I had to let it go. It wasn't bearing any good fruit. That time and season was over. I like to do it. There's sacrifice, so a sacrifice of things that aren't necessarily sinful, but you have to repent from dead works. You need to evaluate that yourself. Then it says the foundation is having faith towards God. Well, that means you don't have faith towards yourself and your ability. You don't have faith for what you can see. You begin to believe what God said. God wants everybody healed. The leper comes. He says, if you want to make me clean, you can make me clean. He said, I do want to. They said, hey, I want you to give these people some food. They've been with me many days. I don't want them to pass out on the way back home. They go, hey, we don't have enough money for that. He said, well, what do you have? He goes, well, we got a couple fish and we got some loaves. And then he prays to the Father and at the end, after they feed 5,000 men plus the women and children, they take up the, the, what's left, and there's more than what they started with. So he's saying, look, I'm the God of all creation. That's why his first miracle was turning water into wine. To turn water into wine, you need, you need a grape vine, a grape seed, a grape vine. You need water. You need photo sunlight. You need adequate uh, time and season, then you need a fermentation process, and he does it in an instant, showing he is the God of all creation. So he's saying you got to now have faith of God, not faith in what you've seen in your pastor, although he can be an encourager. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He was going to get them jump-started until they got that implemented and they could go off on their own. But ultimately, the faith has to come from God's word. I and my word are one and the same. He holds his word above his own name, and it's his good pleasure to come and perform that word in your life if you have faith. So you have to have faith towards God. You don't have faith in your past track record of what he's done. Now, if he's done many miracles, you can recount those and you can reflect back on those days. When I go in the jails and preach, I have zero doubt and zero unbelief that everybody's getting saved that's not saved. I believe it. And, hey, it's rarely that a guy won't stand for the altar call and proclaim proclaim Christ and ask for help. It's rare. Well, I have faith. Why? I can look back and see the past experience over the last X amount of years, and it happens. So there's things you can glean from to give you an anticipation to keep going on, but there's ultimately to establish the foundation in your life, the faith has to be in God and his word. That's the elementary principle. Then it's the doctrine of baptisms. You got to have the baptism of salvation. You got to have the baptism of water. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. So there's people that come in here and they want to get delivered, and you've never even got together with believers and got baptized in water. Now, I encourage you, you can get delivered today. The Holy Spirit will deliver you today, but you certainly should be around some believers and be baptized. Baptism is symbology. You go down in the water, that's your old life going in, into the grave, and what comes out is the new man. The old man is symbolically pass, passing away. John the Baptist didn't want to do it to Jesus. He said, no, I need to be baptized by you. And Jesus says, let it be done to fulfill all righteousness. So we can't be rebels. You, you, a rebel will not have the elementary principles of Christ. So then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's clear. They're all happy. They all hug Jesus when he rose from the dead. 
And he says this, don't cling to me. I haven't yet ascended to my father. He says, it's better that I go because when I go, then I'll send you the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power to be my witnesses. So they've already been water baptized. They've already been discipled by Jesus for numerous years. And they're left to wait and they're continually happy and they're continually singing songs. That's where most Christians go, to happy places with Jesus. They never go on to Holy Spirit fire. Why? Because they never got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The doctrines and the teachings of men make the word of God no effect. And you got half of Christian America telling you doctrines that will make the Holy Ghost power void in your life. Because you have to tarry. You have to be hungry for the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you love me, so here's the question. You can't love God unless he first loved you. So you were born again. And he says, if you love me, you will obey me. So now there's a time of testing. He says, if you obey me, then I will send the Holy Spirit to you. And then after that, my Father will man me and my Father will manifest ourselves to you and through you. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the disciples got it in chapter Acts chapter 2. There was a time where Cornelius, the first Gentile that gets born again, Peter's preaching to him, and he's not baptized. And at the same time he gets saved, he gets filled with the Holy Spirit and begins to speak in tongues. There's another time where Philip, one of the former table waiters, goes down and he's preaching to the Samaritans, the half Jews, half Gentiles. And they were baptized and they all believed, but the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen upon them. So he calls for two disciples to come down from Jerusalem. They lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. So there's the baptism of salvation, there's the baptism of water, there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh-oh, and the baptism of fire. I've met many people who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and now they're moping around. Well, you know, I thought I was doing really good, and then, you know, I started watching porn, and, you know, uh, you know I'm not going to expect much from God when I watch porn, you know, and do those things that I do, and so, you know, and they just take this self-defeat. And I got to go back to the basics. I said, okay, were you saved by works or were you saved by grace? And they went, well, I'm saved by grace through faith. It's not of myself. And I said, so now you sin. Did you, did you uh, take away? Did you lose your salvation? Did you walk away from God? Did you not deny him? Did you tell him you don't want anything to do with him? No, no, I never did that. I would never do that. I said, okay, so when you were doing good, did you add anything to your salvation? Hey, you were preaching. You led five people to Jesus. You were witnessing. You were giving a cup of cold water out in the summer heat in the name of Jesus. Now, were you adding to that salvation? Oh, no, no. It was fully paid for through, uh, by Christ Jesus and him alone. And I said, okay, now you're, now you're sinning and now you're stuck and the devil's got you owning the defeat. He's got you repeating what he put in your head, negativity. No, God rises us up, raises us rather, up out of the miry pit of deception. You've been deceived. You've got to let Christ rise you up, up out of that deception. So you can see again, so you can get your hope back, you can get your dreams back, you can get your passion back. And then the gifts will flow right out of you. And hey, demons, you, you, you stop believing demons, reiterating and repeating what demons told you, you'll find that the deliverance happens fast. But if you own what they tell you, then you've got to suffer that consequence because the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So he, if he can warp your mind and get you to believe a lie, then you live the lie. So we need to cling to the truth by these elementary principles of Christ, baptisms, uh-oh, and the laying on of hands is a... Oh, that's not just how we pray for people. No, they come forward and Jimmy, the, the, the cat burglar, you know, uh, Mikey, the five-hour-a-day porn watcher. We just now lay hands on them because they're going to be ministers now. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not lay hands on no man hastily, lest you find his ways. How are you going to find his ways? You're going to find his ways by his spirits. Do not go under an evil man's roof, lest you find his ways. How are you going to find his ways? By his spirits. So laying on the hands, if you look at it from the Old Testament to the New Testament, is an impartation of a gift. Dude, I'm not a violent person, but I will give you one fair warning not to put your hands on me and pray. And I'll give two by stepping back. I haven't went to step three yet, but I'm not going to let someone I don't know and I don't trust that I want what you got in me. 
I would never do it. I, I, I braced myself. I quit going to a church in Central Phoenix, which is, they believe in everything we teach here, but they have low discernment of the spirit world, and therefore they have people operating in that church that are out of line, and they got other spirits. They're infected. And I went there, and I said, okay, if they try to pray for us, kids, you know, this is what we do. Tell them I'm exercising my free will, and you point right in their face. So don't let them do it. And then I thought, man, what am I doing going to this church if I got to prepare myself for a battle? I'm supposed to be known and know one another. I'm supposed to be built up by the prophecy and by the gifts and the teaching of the eldership. I said, Wait, let's go eat lunch. We can't go here. There was no faith for it if that's how you got to prepare yourself. But the laying on the hands is an impartation. Timothy, stir up that gift in which you received by the laying on of my hands. Not that we prayed for it and we held hands. I'll, I'll hold hands with anybody. I'm not. He was in me. He's greater than he was in the world. Hey, I believe some power could come out and on to them. But laying on hands and putting hands on people's back is, is a spiritual impartation. And that's why many people get sick. And that's how Kundalini floats all around these churches. And that's how these rehab centers, everybody stays sick. And they all stay at a level. One part, I, I, the devil wants two things in your life. The first thing he wants, and oh, they're smart. There's a roundtable discussion when you come into existence. The minute your father's sperm hits that egg, boom! They go, the council arises because they know that there's a spiritual guardian. An angel goes into operation. If the kingdom of darkness is going to have uh, any standing chance against the kingdom of God, then he better have a plan. And so he sits together with these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, a spiritual host of wickedness. He's got the demons to execute it and get inside the human body. And Satan's at this round table. And they begin to make a plan. And their first plan is to block you to come from coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and being saved. Their number one goal is they don't want you born again. The second phase, if you get saved, they want to block you from moving in the Holy Spirit. They don't want you moving in the Holy Spirit because if you, if you preach, well, they can take a preach out of somebody. You get somebody healed, uh-oh. Oh, now they've had an encounter. Now, wow, I'm walking around with it. Hey, when you're saved, that, that's the ultimate encounter. But how many beat-down Christians have you met that would doubt their salvation and actually were fruit-bearing Christians? They're, 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 they're out there by the thousands and thousands. So he's very masterful in waging a war against the saints. That's who he wages a war. He has an infrastructure for the world. And the whole world, he leads astray by his sway of the wicked one. He's the prince of the power of the air, and he's the god of this age. And the second phase, he does not want you moving in a sign of a believer. What are the signs of a believer? They're supernatural miracle-working signs. The first sign is casting out demons. I don't believe in casting out demons. Well, you should believe your Bible because it says the first sign of you, if you're a true believer, is you're going to cast out demons. Well, who do you start with? Yourself. Remove the plank out of your own eye. Then you'll have a vision. Getting rid of demons allows godly vision to come into play. Paul had three days of blindness. Something came upon his eyes like scales. But when he received the word of God and prayer, and he did his due diligence, repentance and sorrow, remorse for his sins for three days, and then he received the Holy Spirit power, and something like scales fell off his eyes. So he begins to give you eyes to see when you begin to go through deliverance. You get closer to the fire. You get closer to being refined because the chaff is being, is being burned out. And so now... The first sign is casting out demons. The second sign is speaking in tongues. Tongues did not go away. Paul, Paul spoke in tongues more than everyone. He told the church how to operate in it. Hey, if there's no interpreter, you remain silent and you stay in church praying to God. But when you come together and you're speaking to the congregation, one, two, three at the most, and then there must be an interpreter. If there's no interpreter that day, you just pray to yourself. You pray to God. Because one prays in prayer, uh, in tongues rather, He's praying prayers and requests that are unknown. It's not foreign languages to yourself. I'm not speaking in Latin. I'm not speaking in Hebrew. I'm speaking in an unknown language, unknown to my mind, but a language that is known to God as my spirit is making intercession on my behalf. That means I'm praying a perfect prayer. I don't care who you are, and I know some people that can lay down some really nice prayers. I had two people call me before this service, and they were excellent. I would have gave them a 9, 9.5. They were wonderful prayers. 
but they got nothing on the Holy Ghost prayer. They're just perfect. Boom. So you need Jesus Christ. Is the, he, he intercedes for us with prayers and requests. What's he, the Holy Spirit and Jesus are interchangeable. When he says, I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. I will remain in you. Well, we know God's on the throne and Jesus is at the throne on the right hand of the Father. But the Holy Spirit is equally God. So he's praying this prayer, interceding for you. It's a mystery, but it's a fact. So it's a sign of your spiritual growth using that spiritual gift. Casting out demons, speaking in new tongues. Then you get rid of the devil. You take up serpents. Not dancing with snakes. You get rid of them. You get rid of putting your kids in front of television screens, iPhone screens, telephone screens. You get rid of it. You get rid of your porn collection. You get rid of your black book for your booty calls. You get rid of your dope pipe. You get rid of your flask of whiskey so you can hit it at work when your back is sore. You, you begin to get rid of the devil. It's a sign of a believer. Why? Because he's operating in power, Holy Spirit power. He's praying perfect prayers and perfect answers are coming down. So now he's clearing. Why is he now able to clear? Because God's given him a vision and eyes to see. Hello, why can't you see? Because you have spirits blinding you. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing in whom the God of this age has blinded them so they can't see. The devil blinds people spiritually. So then the final, you go on and, hey, they're going to try to kill us with some poison. They're going to try to put it in the water. If they drink anything deadly, it's got to be in... It's got to be still to come, right? I mean, it could be the tap water, so I quit drinking tap water a long time ago. You drink tap water, you need a little tap on your own head. Wake up, don't drink that. It's toxic. But I don't think it is. I think in the future this is to come because it says they'll drink anything deadly and it will by no means harm them. So to me, it looks like future tense because I haven't seen anything in history where people just drank stuff and died by the thousands, right? And then what's the final sign? You lay hands on sick people and sick people recover. Why is that the last sign? Because now the Holy Spirit power is flowing through you. You've now not only got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you got the baptism of the fire, and now you have faith towards God. You believe God told you to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, and you do it not by sight, not by what you can understand or what you can figure out, but by faith. And God moves in the miraculous and heals broken bodies. Opens deaf ears, blind eyes, etc. In his case, he was cleansing lepers, raising the dead. So there's a level of growth. We all got to use our faith. We all got to stir up the gifts that are in us to see these things happen. Because he said, these works that I do, you'll do. And greater numbers of them because I'm going to the Father. Jesus did no miracles that are recorded until he received the Holy Spirit come down upon him like lightning and a dove. First thing he does is he... Led out by the Spirit, he's driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tested. When you get the Holy Spirit, no one on planet Earth, mark my words, no one on planet Earth gets the Holy Spirit and a free pass just to use that gift. Nobody. Everybody's got to be tested. If Je no servants above, above his master. If Jesus was tested for 40 days and 40 nights, so severe that at the end the angels had to come and minister to him, you think you're just going to get the Holy Spirit and you're just going to walk out there and just start moving in miracle working power, casting out everybody's demons? No, you're going to be tested. And what's the test going to be? Well, he's going to look at the list as they've been watching you, these demons, all your life. And they're going to say, oh, man, a little bit of shame. Kind of feels like a loser. It started in third grade. Jimmy called him a loser. You know what? He tried to dribble got picked up on the basketball team, and boy, that, those nerves hit him. He couldn't even dribble. He quit. He went home and cried to mama. Hey, let's go ahead and work this rejection. We've having great success. Sent him four bad girlfriends. They all dumped him, went to another man. He's feeling less than. Hey, you know what? Hey, he's susceptible for drugs because you know what? It gets him over all his pain. He likes to smoke. Let's get him some smoke. Hey, come on, we got to give him some free smoke. Hey, let, let's work in Arizona. Let's get ready for him. Let's go ahead and legalize marijuana. Oh, come on, let's drop down fentanyls to 50 cents a piece. Let, let, let's get him high again. Because if you're high, your Holy Ghost anointing is going down very sharp. God's merciful, so it's not straight down. It's like this. You're on a nosedive, like a plane that ran out of juice. 
You must be sober. You must be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. He is going to swoop on you. He is going to have incredible power against you when you are high and you are inebriated. Then you're going to see some miracles through your hands. It will change your life. Uh-oh, what's another elementary principle? The resurrection of the dead. Paul said if the dead are not rise, do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, we're the most pitiful of all men because we gave our lives to be beaten and chased down by wild men. We've been, I've been laid for dead after being stoned and beaten with sticks and rods and put in prisons and shackles. And if I'm doing all this for a lie, I'm the most pitiable person on the planet. But Christ is risen. And one day you'll rise. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive will meet them in the sky. We'll be taken off to be with Jesus forever. And you're going to sit as a believer before the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to give an account for the talent you have and what you did with it. You're going to give it uh, the talent he gave you. He's going to, you're going to give an account for even every idle word that you spoke. There's going to be some people. There's going to be, it's all going to be laid right before the Lord. You're going to give it an account. But the fearful and the unbelieving are thrown into hell. Well, I didn't see it, so I didn't do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Not a, that's a demonic lie. Not seeing who hopes for what he sees. For we hope for what we do not see. So we're called to bear good fruits. If you step into the fruit-bearing realm, God will begin to show you increase in ways and strategies and tactics to win more souls. But if you have no desire to help anybody, then you're not going to see the hand of God. And if you don't see the hand of God, you won't have the revelation of what God wants, other than you know that he wants everybody saved. So at least you should be preaching to people. But if you can learn to serve people and preach, you're going to have incredible success you're going to learn a whole lot of stuff in the time of testing. But most Jews died in the wilderness, and they didn't go to the promised land. Only the children and Joshua and Caleb. So many Christians, most of them do not go into fruit-bearing seasons. Why? Because they don't have the elementary foundations of Jesus Christ. And so they're on flesh. They're on sand. So when the test comes, because the devil is the tempter, he tests everyone, and then he just knocks down and he crushes everything that's built on sand and built on your flesh. He knocks it right down to the ground, and he's got the right to do it, and God lets him keep doing it because he told you in his word, if you build on anything other than the rock, when the streams rise and the storms come and there's a beating on the house, hey, it'll be able to stand if it's built on the rock. You choose to do otherwise, he tells you it's going to crash. Then there's an eternal judgment. That's the elementary foundation. And he says, and this we will do if God permits. Oh, it's God's will. Those are six things. You've got to have them etched in your mind. Elementary principles of Christ in order to go on to perfection. Repentance from dead works. Faith towards God. The doctrine of baptism. The laying on of hands. The resurrection of the dead. And the eternal judgment. You know, one of the saddest things when you're evangelizing to someone, yeah, I've been saved, yeah, you know, I was walking with God at a good church, I had some seasons. I said, were you going to heaven? Oh, man, I hope so, brother, man, I hope so. That is someone who is so saturated with doubt and unbelief that it's coming right out of his mouth. Remember, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. He saturated them all the way down to their heart. Now they're speaking out doubt and unbelief. They are completely, if any miracle happened through a person like that, it would only be to fire a person up. It would only be to encourage a person. And most people don't understand, mostly when you first get saved, something really good comes out of your life the first 16 months. Something really good. You lead someone to Jesus. You learn. You can worship. You can praise God. But then all of a sudden, it seems like, well, it does. It retracts for most people. And then they get confused. Why does it retract? Because in order to keep going on, God showed you that by mercy. He opened up the door and he showed you of your, uh, 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 an experience or a season of what you were supposed to do for the rest of your life and for that to continue to grow. But that's what you were to, but if you're not interested in it, it quenches. Do not quench the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. How do you, how do you quench him? Because he's a fire. You can't quench uh, anything but a fire. To quench a fire is to throw water on it and put it out. So if you don't want to do things for God, 
You definitely need deliverance because you are blinded because God is good and everything you do for God is with God. So he's with you and he's moving through you and everything you do isn't ever going to be eaten up by a moth or corroded or a thief can't steal it. It's in heaven forever. So the second thing is you got to change your life. You can't serve two masters and you can't eat off two tables. You can't drink off two cups. You got to separate yourself now. But most people don't want to separate themselves from the sin-stained world. They don't want to separate themselves from things they like. They don't want to make any sacrifices. Therefore, they quench the spirit and it retracts. So sometimes people are really down in the dumps and all of a sudden a miracle pops out. Why does that happen? Because God is trying to show you what he's called you to do. He wants you to do it on a regular basis. So sometimes it happens, but it's only a mercy, revelation, and using of you. Because you weren't in faith, and you weren't walking by the elementary principles of Christ. You weren't stirring up the gift that you received by laying on in the eldership. You, you weren't going on through the process of water baptism, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon you, getting the Holy Spirit fire. You got snuffed out. You got bogged down at some point in the, in the system. But we can repent of that tonight, and we can lay it down, stand on it, and move forward tonight. That's the good news for you. John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he says, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. Do, don't marvel at my saying, you must be born again. He says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. He says, you hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it goes. He says, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. He's showing you right there to have moving of the Spirit in your life. You have to have revelation from the Holy Spirit. You, you got to have your eyes open. Otherwise, it'll be, you'll be dumbfounded. Where did that come from and where did that go? How'd that happen? No, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, he says, for in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Boom. The minute you were baptized, you were saved. You're into one body of Christ. Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, all in all. And what does it say? We were all made to drink of one spirit. You don't drink one time. You drink continually. You can fast for a long time, but you can't go without water for a long time. That is not recommended. I don't know any preachers to really that on a regular basis, tell you stop drinking and eating. Everyone is like, hey, you do real well. Just stop stuffing your faith and drink water. But what happens, hey, there's a feeling of the Holy Spirit. There's a fire that comes upon you, but you got to continually get filled with the Holy Spirit. How are you going to do that? You get in the presence of God. You become a worshiper of God. You get around a cloud of great witnesses that operate like that. You don't go to Billy Dum Dum's church who sings three songs and goes to a half-hearted message so he can get his $60,000 paycheck a year. You ain't going to get it there. You get it with people that are hungry for God, that are passionate for God, who have sacrificed their life to God. The, the, in the book of Acts, they were filled in Acts 2. And then it's constantly through there the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. Matthew chapter 3, 11, he says, I, bab oh, I read that with John. The Holy Spirit or Jesus will come baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Hebrews chapter 12, 29, he says, on the day when they were all arrived together, one place, suddenly, oh, when does the Holy Spirit come upon you? Suddenly. If you ask, you shall receive. If you, though are evil, know how to give good gifts to your, to your children, it says, how much more will the, will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So you got to ask. When you ask and you're in the right place, which is here tonight, because we've prayed, hundreds of people have prayed for this ministry. It might seem small, but it's, it's got the prayer backing of few ministries, and I doubt any ministry this size has as much prayer backing per size. We got 35 people in here. Oh, I guarantee you it's hard to find a group where you can come in where there's 35 people and the amount of people who've prayed for us behind the scenes are praying for you. So the Holy Spirit can come upon you suddenly if you're interested. If you're interested in what? Not just getting out of your jam. You got to start where you are. Get out of your jam. Get the, the, the basic fundamentals and foundation of Christ. That's fine. But hey, when the Holy Spirit fire comes, oh, now stuff just starts getting burned out. It says his wind-knowing fork is at hand. 
and it says he's going to gather his wheat unto the threshing floor. And it says, and the chaff he's going to burn up with an unquenchable fire. Oh, that's when, the whole, that's when deliverance takes off, is when the Holy Spirit fire comes upon you. And the fire doesn't come upon just the people waddling in, seeing if this is real or not. I'd like to get a touch. If it doesn't happen, I hope he gives me a little encouragement. Uh, I hope God sees it as, as I'm on the right track. No, for the Holy Ghost fire to come upon you, you got to have a thirst and you got to have a hunger. But he will come. He will come. He's not a respecter of persons. That's what the Bible was uh, taken down for you and me so that we could see not only what God wants to do, how God will do it. You got to be in a position of faith or you got to run into somebody that's got faith. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's an interesting world. I talk about it sometimes, but it just happened Monday. Me and Pete walked in to the Maricopa County jails and the first place was full, not an empty seat. And, man, there was faith in there. I mean, the message was flowing out of me like you can't believe. And the second one, oh, there was a few empty seats, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, eyes fixed on me. So I'm pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, hey, at that point, I got to do what I got to do. I'll push on through. I'll, I'll try to let some Holy Ghost flow on out and, and fall on them to see something happen. But the reality is, if you're hungry... Things are going to happen suddenly. But you got to want it. And, and, and want deliverance, it says you got to count the cost. You know, no one goes and starts building these great structures without counting the cost or in 2008 realizing the banks might not fund your project and might go into foreclosure because they refused to give you any more money. But other than that, it says, hey, if you build half the structure, it says everyone who walks by is going to ridicule that person and say, ah, he did not count the cost. He got stuck. He got 80% done. He got the windows on. He got the brick up. But, uh, man, there's no interior. There's no, there's no working bathrooms and kitchens. It's just a shell. It doesn't operate as a home. It, it's just a place of storage. Well, you got to count the cost. If you get delivered, you're fighting demons. Well, if you can't win a battle fighting yourself, how are you going to fight demons? Does that even make sense? If, if, if God's for you, it says, who can be against you? For he who did not spare his own son, will he certainly not give you all things? God takes the, the worst sinner. Paul called himself the chief, the head honcho, the number one sinner. He persecuted the church, gave a head nod and consenting even to the death of of Stephen, the first martyr, who was getting a standing ovation from God himself. The heavens were open, and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Paul can't see none of it other than, I hate this man, and I want this done with. So he gives the head nod, and they stone him to death. So he said, I don't even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church, but I am what I am by what? The grace of God. How are you going to be what God called you to be? The grace of God. Hello, that's the salvation, that's the perfection, that's the power, that's the continually stirring, that's the continually being filled to be able to complete your call until the day he calls you home. You're going to do it by grace, not by works. So you got to stop condemning yourself right now. If I said, hey, who screwed their life up, at least in one major area, I don't even have to ask it. Every single hand goes up. And if your hand doesn't go up, I'm going to have Kelly working with you because you got narcissism. You believe all kinds of lies. You need real help. Every hand goes up. That's how this sin-stained world works. Until you learn to stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ and his truth and his will and operate not in your human ability, but in his power. Hey, I, I know it's... I know we got to go to work. We go to work here. Thank you for your donations because we have no bathrooms. If you're using the bathroom, it's going to be at that little house right there. Uh, our bill is already at a little less than $50,000, and uh, that doesn't cover the rebuild of the kitchen or the flooring. So it's going to uh, good ground. It'll keep this place going and and uh, Lord willing, we're going to keep helping people until Christ comes home. Uh, I've even had a vision that I was, I was caught up in the rapture. Uh, I'm a pre-tribber. 
You can convince me otherwise, and I'm preparing because I believe you a little just in case we go through the tribulation. But I had a dream. I'm preaching on that roof, and they were in the parking lot all listening. And it was before there was even any of this uh, flu virus stuff going on and, and lockdowns. It was before that. So I believe this is good ground. That's up to you and God. God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, but what you really got to give is your heart over to the Lord for real. You know, I mean, when you first believed, come on, man, I, I used to sit and read the Bible. And I had never read a book in my life. I mean, as a kid, I didn't read Cat in the Hat. I was not a little kid. I played with sticks. I, I made bow and arrows since the time I was three. My mom had helped me. I'd whittle that thing down to a point, and I'd shoot those things. I, I was an outside kid. I'm, I'm the son of a farmer. My dad's dad was a farmer and so on, as far as we can go back. I wasn't a book. I didn't, Mom, can you read me this book? I wasn't that kid. But when I get saved, God had already told me 10 times to read the Bible, and I gave him 10 excuses. Hey, I'm not really a reader. I got in trouble at 16. I tried to read somewhere in the Old Testament and got bogged down with the King James Bible real quick. I think I was two pages in and said, this is on another level than me. I just quit. Well, I wasn't born again. I didn't have power. I didn't have any revelation. So now I got power because I'm saved. You got power even though you maybe have not been baptized even in water. You haven't been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You haven't went on to Holy Spirit fire. But the minute you were born again, that's the most powerful baptism that there is. And you now belong to God. And there is power. He is in you. He doesn't, he's going to come upon you on other levels down the road. But he is in you and he is stronger than he was in the world. And he is in, interested. And his primary focus is saving people and then setting them at liberty from the oppression of the enemy. Taking you out of the entanglement. Taking you out of the snare. Taking you out of the pit. It's his good pleasure. He wants to do it. He wants to do it. If he doesn't do it for us, then, hey, if, if you're the upper 10 percentile, you'll be a good Baptist. You, you never looked at porn. You never seen a drug. You'll be a good Baptist. Man, you'll be there. You can go two times on Sundays. You can show up. You can sing like a bird. You can sing bad and still be happy, however you like to do it. And you can go to a Bible study. But you can't move with the Holy Spirit power. It, that's why they don't do it. Because they had a doctrine that made the word of God of no effect. They began to teach it to generation to generation to generation. Then they keep the guy who's now making his livelihood by that profession saying, hey, you go teach it anything else and you are out lickety split. They don't even need to tell you that. You've just seen the, the, the corporate magazine of your affiliation and seen how they've been railroaded and out and kicked out. They don't take the movement of the Holy Spirit. And that's dangerous. When you call the things of God evil, whoa, that's, that's wrong. Deliverance. You cannot convince. I've seen dozens and dozens of people divinely, supernaturally healed right before my very eyes. I've seen thousands of people, thousands and thousands, delivered. And I was delivered. I know what's real. I know how I used to just have a spiritual crutch just to keep going. I used to motivate myself. Man, I, I, oh, I like to smoke marijuana. Man, they'd break me off a little butt of that. Oh, no, I can't be doing that. I can't go back. God did a miracle for me. But I didn't get delivered. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and that desire was burned out. But if my heart didn't change, so slowly I kind of wanted to do it again, but I knew it was wrong. And I didn't want to embarrass Christ, so I didn't do it. And I would find it on job sites, and I would literally, sometimes I'd throw it in the dumpster. The voice would talk in my head saying, hey, if you went back with a flashlight, you could find that little bag of weed. No one would know about it. Nobody would know. And so if I ever found it again, I knew I had to throw it into the ground, drive it into the dirt so it wouldn't talk to me anymore. Oh, I couldn't put two and two together because I went to a church that didn't tell me, that told me rather that Christians can't have demons. So if we can't have demons, then it's all on me and it's my own problems. So I got to deal and navigate it with spiritual crutches. There's times when I had spiritual wheelchairs just to try to move along and get along and go forward and not talk about certain things and not repeat certain things. I was masking the problems. I wasn't dealing with the problems. The Holy Spirit comes to deal with your problems. And when the Holy Spirit deals with the problem, he delivers you from the problem. 
He takes you out of the grasp, out of the power. The devil has power. Luke 10, 19 says, I give you power over the devil's power. He shows you the devil has power. The devil has a kingdom. The devil has a third of God's holy angels. Now, let's put this into perspective before we pray. Now, you've got to understand, the devil, it says, was created perfect in wisdom and perfect in beauty. How persuasive do you have to be in a situation where there's no sin? There is no sin in the presence of God. There is no recorded history of any sin with the, ser- the, the cherubim and the seraphim, God's angels. God, it's impossible for him to sin. He's truth. In him is no lie. So all of a sudden, this devil... Since he's the most beautiful creation, since he's adorned with all these rubies and sapphires and onyx and beryl and topaz, he, he, he's now the light bringer. He's lighting up, and you're singing baritone. You're lighting up, and you're singing a cappella, and you get the beat over here when the diamond's glistening. And, man, it's some kind of incredible show. And he starts sinning in his mind. You know what? I want to be worshipped. I'm giving all this to God. I'm something. I'm somebody. Hey, and he's so smart that he takes one-third of God's holy angels away from God. I mean, from the God that created them into existence. I don't know how he created angels into existence. I assume it's a little similar to when he reaches down in the dust of the earth, he forms Adam in his image and breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. It's similar something because God is the creator God. He created them in some miraculous way. So they had the same experience when Adam's eyes were open. Boom! I bet it didn't take a millisecond before he hugged God. He had a personal relationship with God. He walked with God. And there was no demons in him. He didn't have any spirits persuading him in any way, shape, or form. He had a spirit over there talking to his wife. And he was able to fall. So don't look at yourself and think you're some kind of ugly, wormy, evil creature before the eyes of God. This devil is smart. He's a masterful deceiver. He leads the whole world astray. I think, and I don't, I, you know, I hope everybody gets saved. I hope everybody I preach to goes to, on to glory. But I got this little feeling in my gut that it's small in there. It's a small line compared to the line going to hell. I know that's true. Because 90% of people deny Jesus Christ as God manifested in the flesh. They deny Christ as the only way to the Father. So I know that line is thick. But now, out of the church, I think it's even more narrow. Why? Because people have fear and people have unbelief. And yes, fear and unbelief is a part of human nature. Absolutely right. But when you're born again, you're... You're accountable for the new creature. You're accountable for the new nature in Christ, the new power. And if you refuse to do it, I I heard the parable of the talents. He shows up to Jesus. Jesus gave him one talent. He said, hey, I was afraid of you, so I buried it. Here it is. He's at the day of judgment trying to negotiate with God, and he's thrown into the portion of the unbelievers. He knew his talent was from God. He knew God was his creator. He shows up to his creator. He gives him back. What was his? And he says, you wicked and lazy man. I'm going to judge you by your own words. You knew I was an austere man, reaping where I had not sown and gathering where I had not scattered seed. You should at least put my money with a banker that when I got it back, I'd have some interest. But since I got no increase, threw him to hell. Took what he had and gave it to him who had 10. That's a serious Bible verse. Oh, once you're saved, you're always saved. Not according to that verse. That, that theology does not add up to that verse. You're going to say that that man showed up on the day of judgment and knew what he got came from his master? A sinner does not know if his master is the sun of the moon, a dog, or a whittled stick. He's lost in his sin and trespasses. He's an alien and a foreigner to God. This is someone who shows up and says, Master, here's what's yours. He's showing up to his God, his creator. But he didn't do what God told him to do. Why? Because he was fearful and he was unbelieving. You start believing God, fear will be burned up. You start stepping out on your belief. That's faith. What do you start doing when you step out in faith? You start treading over the devil like the snake and the scorpion he is. You realize that God puts you on a level. 
and then you can operate on the level where he can't touch you. He'll put a hedge of protection around you. He can tempt you. Oh, he can have good things. He can have a Holy Ghost house, galvanized plumbing just fall and collapse on each other till the toilet paper was pushed up through the, the air vents almost to the roof. Yeah, he can tear up the building. Yeah, he can, he, can, he can let a time bomb go off. He did it to my friend's ministry center that he works at over there. They're dealing with the same issue we're dealing with. He can, he can cause mischief. He can cause someone to betray you. He can cause someone to falsely accuse you. But if you begin to operate by faith, oh, you begin to get rid of the demonic forces of doubt, unbelief, lust, concerns, worries, hate, envy, strife, unforgiveness, witchcraft, sorcery, divination, drug, pharmacia spirits. Oh, he, you'll find it's pretty easy to navigate. You'll start having some Bruce Lee type reflexes. Matter of fact, you should go watch an old Bruce Lee movie. You don't have to watch the whole thing. They're kind of lame. They're a little outdated. But watch how he hits people. He's like, he's like, bam! You don't even see him move his hand because his hands are so fast. That's how you'll operate in this sin-stained world. If you start operating with Holy Spirit fire, like, oh, man, porn. Here's porn again. Oh, I'm triple X away from a good double orgasm on Friday, and I don't have any friends or nobody and no girl and wife. No wife loves me. Dude. You know how I many? I'm not saying I'm, I'm like a putting repeat on myself. I've heard that 250 times. This is 50 percent of men. Well, just take stress off. Oh, don't don't laugh, ladies, because now that's about 20 percent of the ministry. It's spreading everywhere like a, some kind of infectious demonic disease that it is. Well, you know, I really like weed. You know, uh, duh, sin tastes sweet like honey. Hello. Uh, yeah, getting high. I touched two fentanyls. Somebody dumped some fentanyls on the, on the deal. And I took them up like a dummy, picked them up, and threw them in the trash. And the guy said, hey, you shouldn't have touched those. Those don't have any protective film like pharmaceutical drugs. And all of a sudden, I started feeling a little woozy. And I'm like, is this a psychological placebo effect? I said, no. Then I took a little cat nap for like five minutes waiting for my next appointment. And I'm like, this is just touching this stuff. Just touching it. So, yeah, you think when the devil gets you beat down that unless there's Jesus Christ or incarceration for these fentanyl addicts? I was just working at my buddy's job site, and the whole park is fentanyl park. They smoke it on the tinfoil. They don't even hide. There was 50 of them in this park. And he said, I had to drop this price of this house, $55,000 because of this. Some people just wouldn't buy it, but this guy's going to buy it, and he's good with it. He thinks the area will turn around over time. And I was just seeing these dudes getting on their bikes, and they'd roll down from wherever they were sleeping. No disrespect to a human being, but they'd roll on down just getting their little dollar. A dollar gets you two little highs. And, 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 and I told that guy, I said, man, what's the remedy for this? He's not a Christian. He goes, man, I don't know. You don't got no job and no hope. You got to do something. And I said, ooh, that's exactly right. What's being happened is they're being systematically eliminated one by one by one by one by one until they're all gone. And after there's about 100,000 of them passed away, then the next generation will be like my generation uh, or like my sons who say, meth, are you kidding me? How in the world could you do methamphetamines? You'll lose your teeth, your mind, your home, your, fram your friends, your family. You'll lose it all. Oh, we got to do a little more preaching. We just got a crowd. So we can't just go to the altar call. You ever been here, family? You ever been here for deliverance? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to pray for Holy Spirit, fire. When the fire comes down, what does it do? It burns up everything. What does it burn up first? It burns up the chaff. It burns up your kindling, and it burns it instantly. Oh, some things might take a little longer to burn out than others, but you can burn out some unwanted stuff. You can burn out some chaff. You can't build with chaff. You can't build with it. It, it. It's 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 meant for nothing but to burn it up. And so the Holy Spirit will do it. But how do we get him to do it? First, you gotta you gotta talk to God like your father. He says clearly when he was teaching his disciples how to pray, don't go on praying vain, repetitious prayers. I don't hear him. He doesn't hear him. He said, but when you pray, you pray like this, and the first thing you do is you start worshiping God. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. 
My Father, I love you. you got to start talking to the Father. Jesus reconciled you to the Father when you got born again. And then you gotta, you got to tell him that you're sorry. It's the first elementary principle of Jesus Christ. you got to apologize for your sin. To apologize for your sin doesn't mean I know how to stop doing it. To apologize for your sins doesn't mean you know how you'll live in a way that you'll never do it again or it'll repeat itself. It's, it's, it's void of all that. Telling the Lord you're sorry for sin is just acknowledging it's wrong and acknowledging that you've been doing wrong. And then God will help you. He'll help you. But if you don't confess your sins, then you're going to have a real slow night. Then after you repent of your sins, you got to tell him what you want. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Well, that's how he tells you. You, you praise him, and then you tell him what you want. What do you want in your life? You want your ministry back? You want a ministry? You want peace in your life? You want freedom? You, you want a purpose? You want hope? You want... You want done with all these addictions and all these, all these uh, cravings that are strange and, and, and foreign to a disciple of Jesus Christ? You can ask for them. If you ask for anything and you pray for anything according to his will, it says it will be done. It doesn't say it might be done. It says it will be done. But that's someone who's repenting from their sin. They're repenting from it. And then they're asking God in what? In faith. There's things I used to do. I got no desire to do it. I got, I got some things that, hey, man, I can still be tempted. I got to keep a guard up. I got to keep my eyes open. I got to be able to give it. I, I got spiritual knives in my mind. I, I got things that I don't, I don't think everybody has to live life like I live, but I got some knives. And so when crazy thoughts start coming in my head, I pull out these knives and just start cutting it. And, I, and I'm symbolically saying, devil, I'm rejecting this. I'm not going to let you entangle me like you constantly entangled me all my life. And then it doesn't last but about 30 seconds, and I move about my day. I go to work, I go eat, I go do what I got to do, but I don't go around my, my day with that stuff. You can ask him to be free from something. You can use your faith to guarantee that it'll happen tonight. I'll show you how to do it. Heavenly Father, our Father. Oh, glorify your name tonight. Lord, I apologize that I don't feel that comfortable saying I love you and I praise you and I worship your holy name. Lord, I come out of my comfort zone right now and I just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending my Savior, your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being so merciful and faithful that, Lord, you didn't deal with me like you dealt with the angels. When they sinned, their destination was hell. But, Lord, you sent a Savior. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. You were willing to pay the price to leave heaven, to leave your throne, to come down here and robe yourself in humanity, to be a faithful and a merciful high priest, to lay down your life as a ransom, to defeat the devil, to take the keys of death in Hades. Thank you that I'll face you one day and that you love me. I won't face you as a foe. I'll face you as my Lord and my God. Thank you, Lord. I do love you. And Lord, I, I know what's sin. I've been sinning. I don't feel right about what I've been doing. Some of the stuff I've been doing all my life, and, and I'm growing in a check in my spirit to say this has got to be deal, dealt with. I've been having a place for the devil to reside and operate for far too long tonight, Lord, I tell you, I'm sorry. I am sorry that I've been sinning against you. I've justified it. I've glossed over it. I've turned a blind eye to it. And, Lord, here it still remains, and some of it's growing worse. And, Lord, I apologize that I've been doing that to you, Lord. I'm sorry that I've embarrassed you. I'm sorry that I couldn't, you couldn't advance me and you couldn't move me any more forward because of my doubt and unbelief and my rebellion. Tonight, Lord, I apologize for being a rebel. And I want to be a good son to you. I want to love you back. And you said, if I love you, that I, I would obey you and that all your commandments are not a burden for those who love you. So, Lord, I know now that I was short on some power. And since I was... Short in asking, I was short in receiving, I was short in believing, and so I didn't have enough to go through some deliverance. 
And Lord, since I didn't go through deliverance, I never really saw that clearly. Tonight, I want to see clearly. I want to see sin for what it is. I want to see your glory. I want to see the gift and the calling of what you placed on my life. And Lord, I want to hear your voice. So I'm, tonight, I'm willing to pay the price and fight back. I've drawn the line in the sand, and I know that I'm with you, and the devil's against me. And if I give him a place, he'll take me back over to that other side, and I never want to be pulled back there into that despair and that depression and that confusion and that loneliness and anger and isolation and revenge and unforgiveness. I never want to go back to the dark side of witchcraft and sorcery and drugs. Have mercy on my soul, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to fill me right now with the Holy Spirit. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need your comfort. I need your counsel. I need your mercy. I need your power. Come, Lord Jesus. Send me that Holy Spirit power. Tonight, Lord, I wanted to, to stir up an anger, a righteous anger for what's been done to me and my family, for what's been done to humanity, for what's been done to the church of Jesus Christ. I want to be a fighter, Lord. I want you to ignite me, Lord, with the Holy Spirit fire, to be passionate and loving to people, not enough just to love them, but to be passionate enough to get my love to them and get your word to them and get your truth to them. Thank you for this promise. You said if I would ask, you would come. So, Lord, I do forgive myself. I cannot fight the enemy and myself. I would never win. Tonight, I choose to receive your grace I choose to believe in your blood that washes sins into the sea of forgetfulness. I choose to believe I can leave them behind and press on to what lies ahead and live in victory when I walk with you. I believe that you left me a weapon, which is your word, and I have to use my tongue. I have to use my mind to study the scriptures, to know your way. And when something comes against your will and your way, to cut it down with your word, to stand on that truth, to speak it out. I'm going to do it tonight, Lord. I forgive my family. I forgive people who led me astray. I forgive people that ripped me off and robbed me. I'm forgiving all people right now in Jesus' name. My battle is not with any human. It's with the spirit world in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I want to be delivered tonight. Send the Holy Spirit power to deliver me from the oppressor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can stay right there because you're perfectly in the front row. But everybody else, you can line up between this black mat and this carpet. You can come forward if you know you need to be delivered. The ministry team's going to come up, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to believe for you. you what, what can you believe for? I'll believe it for you. If you can show me the scripture, I can believe it wholeheartedly tonight. We'll stand in the gap for you. But you got to use the weapons of your warfare, taking thoughts captive, taking thoughts captive. I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore in the name of Jesus. I don't want this anymore. I don't want depression. I don't want another bad relationship that ends bad that sucks another five years. I'm so tired of being misled, getting involved with takers, people that only take take, take, until I got nothing left to give. I forgive them. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. I break the spirits of takers. They took your virginity. They took your innocence. They took your hope. They took your passion. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out in the mighty name of the Lord. Come out of there. Every evil spirit, I declare you were defeated at the cross of Calvary. Every evil spirit, you have to bow to the name of Jesus as it is written. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Don't worry about what's happening for anybody else. You worry what happens for you. In the name of Jesus, send the Holy Spirit fire. Send the Holy Spirit fire. Send the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that defeats all false Christ, all false Jesuses. Come out of there right now. All those spirits of rebellion, I command you to let her go right now. 
You told her if she didn't harden her heart, she'd get ran over by men coming and going until she would be dead. You told her to harden her heart, and now you won't let her go. I loose your hold right now in the name of Jesus. I command this hard heart to come out right now. That won't work in Holy Ghost ministry. She's called for Holy Ghost ministry and a Holy Ghost service. All the pain, you try to bottle that pain in there with the hardness and the anger and the sharp tongue. All that pain. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking out the pain from the abuse and the abandonment. Losing hope in humanity when she saw how evil people could do her and have no remorse or sorrow for it. They could leave her down like a garment and move on and not care. We let them go right now in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, that she gets delivered tonight. Now all those party spirits and all those drug spirits that came in to mask the pain, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. You have nothing to stand on. You have nothing to stand out. Come on, let's go. Come out of there. Every foul spirit that transferred from men that she had intimacy with, I command you to come out. Every time when they try to bring her under their bondage and under their authority, I break that authority. I break that authority. She's not under the authority of those past men. You come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Right out. <laughs> Come all the way out. There he goes. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. All the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Come out of there. All the anger and hate. Come out of there right now. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. Thanks. Come all the way out. All the anger. Vengeance is the Lord's. Come out of there right now. All the self-hatred. Come out of there right now. You try to trick her to hate herself, to think of herself less than. You try to tell her she was a handicapped Christian. You're a liar. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. She's more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who gives her the strength. Come out of there. All the pain spirits. All the spiritual blinders. All the spiritual blinders. Keep going. You got the anointing. Give it all to Jesus. Give it all to him. In the name of Jesus, come out of there. Come out of there. Those foul spirits that get him to quench the Holy Spirit. Come out of there. He starts growing. He moves forward two, three days, two, three months, and you bring him on back. Come out of there right now. Fear of doing what's right. Fear of having the power. Fear of being able to reconcile with his family. Fear of being able to reconcile with the church of God. You come out of there right now. Come out of his mind. Come out of there, all those weed spirits. Come out of there, all those party spirits. Those spirits of divorce. Those spirits trying to take his money. Spirits trying to take his blessings. You devour. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Fight him. Fight him. Fight him in the name of the Lord. Come out of there right now. Spiritual blindness. I command you to let him go right now. Spiritual torment in his mind. I command you to come out right now. I command you to come out of his mind. Stop blinding him. Stop confusing him. Stop letting him. You're trying to make him figure everything out in his mind. Come out of there right now, you overprocessor. Come out of there right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. All the pain from his dad. You come out of there right now. All the pain spirits. I command pain to go. I command pain in the body. I command pain in the back to come out of there right now. I command pain in the soul to leave right now. I command you to come out of there. Word curses that were spoken over her. I renounce every word curse. I apologize, Lord, for everyone that was ever spoken over her. And now we cast them out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Take a big breath. Come out of there. I let it go right now in Jesus' name. I let it go right now in Jesus' name. I let it go, this pain. I let this anger go right now in the name of Jesus. I forgive. Go ahead, start forgiving them. I forgive them. I forgive them in Jesus' name. Lord, he gets his ministry flowing. He gets his anointing flowing. He gets the gifts going in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you for the Holy Spirit fire that breaks down and roots out all this complacency, all these lies, all this compromise. Compromiser, come out of there right now. The voice of the wicked one. Come out of there, Lord. It starts with the anointing. It starts with the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you comfort them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. Thank you for your power. This is the family of God. Thank you for the power for the family of God. I thank you that you're helping them tonight. I thank you that you're helping them tonight. I thank you for the power for the young men, the young men that are called to live in victory, the young men that are called to live in victory. We thank you for this anointing. 
We thank you for the anointing that makes all things new. I thank you that you renew cognitive function, motor skills. Thank you that you renew memories. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't go nowhere. The Holy Spirit's coming. Come out of there, devourer of ministry anointing. Oh, oh, you try to devour the gifts. The gifts are given without reproach. You're a liar. He never takes them away. Come out of there. You just try to quench his fire. You just try to quench his faith. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come all the way out in Jesus' name. Come all the way out. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for these women. Thank you for the Holy Spirit wisdom that you love them. Thank you for the Holy Spirit wisdom that you got them, that you'll never leave them and never forsake them. Thank you for the Holy Spirit wisdom that shows, Lord, there's some things that can get in the body. They can't get in the spirit, but they can get in the body. And they're offense to you. It's called the chaff. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for driving it out. I bind every spirit right now in the name of Jesus that's deceived these women that's lingered around in their body. Every lie. I command every lie to come out. Every broken heart. Every bad memory that's replayed in their mind again and again and again by the enemy. I root it out right now in Jesus' name. I root it out right now in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. It'll go. I root it out in the name of Jesus. I root it out. Thank you for the wisdom, Holy Spirit wisdom, how we get free, how we stay free. In the name of Jesus, come out mind binders, generational curses in the mind. Demons that told her she was cursed. You cannot curse what the Lord is blessed. Oh, you got to get a demon to trick them to curse themselves. Well, we come out of agreement with any foul spirit, and we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out of there right now, every lying spirit. I command you to come out. Every lying spirit, every spirit holding back the family, holding back the family from getting prayers answered, prayers of evangelism, prayers of help in the community. No one argues with laying on hands on a sick body and seeing it recovered. Not one person on the planet. And they've been called for good works such as these. I bind the doubt and the unbelief. The doubt and unbelief that was played in through years of church. Doubt and unbelief. Years played into their eyes through visions in which they saw on TV or in life. In the name of Jesus, the word of God is the truth, and that's, Lord, our direction and our future. I bind every foul devil. Come out right now. Come out of the man of God. Stop tormenting him. Stop tormenting him in the mind. I break this yo-yo. You putting him down and ripping him back up, back and forth. It's over right now in the name of Jesus. We stand in faith. We stand in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the way maker. Jesus, you're the way maker tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way for this man to live in victory. Ah, oh, to truly enjoy his family, to truly enjoy his father, to truly enjoy his life, to truly enjoy you, Lord, and the calling and the people that you're going to put in his path. But, Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so without any strength, Lord, we're, we're ineffective, Lord. We're very limited in our ministry capacity. So thank you that you're sending the Holy Spirit strength through joy. And every foul spirit of depression... I command you to come out right now. Depression and anxieties and fears, racing thoughts, negative expectations. Come out. Come out of there. Let's go. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Those negative thought disorders. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. You try to tell them it was just him. Come out of there. Come out of there. Those negative thought spirits. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Negative thought spirits. Come out of there. Come all the way out. I want you out of my mind giving me these negative thoughts. You're telling me I'm depressed. You're a depressed spirit is what's going on. I want you out of my mind. I want you out of my mind. I want you out of my life. I want you out of my head. Stop talking to me in my head. Keep fighting them. They're going. You have the anointing. You got the anointing. Once the anointing comes, work it. Oh, he'll help you. Just work it. Work it with what? Work it with your faith. Work it with your faith. Oh, good. Okay. In the name of Jesus, every swelling, every every lump, every mass. Every spirit that accumulated that, I command you to die in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of infirmity and insomnia, I come against you trying to take away his strength, trying to take away his, his recuperation. Rec 
recovery, through sleep. I command you, come out of there right now. Insomniac, I command you to come out. Sleeplessness and restlessness and negative thoughts, racing thoughts that are overwhelming them. You come out of there right now. You come out of that brain right now in Jesus' name. He'll go. There he goes. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Devil's blocking his money, blocking his relationships, taking away the ministry, trying to lead him back, giving him that fantasy. Man, you can get another model. You can get another model. You can go on another incredible vacation. Oh, just live in the past. You're a liar. Oh, Paul said we got to forget the things which are behind. And we got to press on to the things which are ahead. In the name of Jesus, this constant spirit dragging him back into the old mindset and the old ways. I command you to come out. The old ways of womanizing, the old ways of premarital sex, the old ways of marijuana. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. There you go. There he goes. Get that stuff out of there. You know what you're fighting. He'll go. Thank you for the anointing to keep going. Thank you for the anointing that I get my health back. Thank you for the anointing that I get my joy back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can be delivered from fear. Fear of not receiving God's blessings. Fear of not getting it back. Fear of missing the boat, so to speak. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I command fear to come out right now. I command fear to leave the family of God. I command the tormentors that came behind the fear. I command the riddled thoughts of doubt and unbelief to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Let the woman of God go. Come out of there, anxiety about the money, anxiety about the family. I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus. got faith there you go in the name of Jesus come out of there right now I know you sit in the pit of the stomach I know doubt and unbelief and worry and concern sit right there we rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus we command you to go right now right now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord hey what's happening up here sir you, you and trust in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you hear my prayers and cries. Lord, I repent, Lord, of believing I'm rejected, of not believing that you gave me the power to live in victory. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry for these lust demons and doing what they tell me to do. I'm so sorry for these drug demons. I know I'm playing with fire. I could die any day. Lord, I want to live and not die. I want to I wanna see you and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, that's what I'm interested in, Lord. Please have mercy on my soul. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, dear, dear Jesus. All right, now, you foul spirit of rejection and abandonment, I'm commanding you, come out now. We're not serving you no more. We're not serving you. I separate you one from another. I forbid you to aid to bed one another. I declare you come out as your name is called. You heard this man pray that prayer. Come out of there right now, in Jesus' name. Fight him. You gotta fight him. You have to fight him. You have to tell him no. You have to tell him it's over. You have to tell him, streamers, I'm not going back. You tell him I'm not going back. The greatest deliverance is when you begin to turn your back on the devil. You begin to turn your back on sin. You begin to say no to negative thoughts. That's the beginning of deliverance. Streamers, I'm going to pray for you before I pray for this big family over here. I bless, Lord, these streamers that are listening right now. I thank you that the Holy Spirit would come on down. You're not subjected to time nor space, Lord, even though they might be watching this on record, played years later on YouTube. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit power to come on down, Lord, and touch them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you touch them with the assurance of your love, your unconditional love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for that power. Now, streamers, just tell them, take your hands off me in the name of Jesus. I'm sick and tired of what you're doing to me. Speak back to the symptoms. 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 You got to forgive. If nothing's happening, he's got something on you. You got to unwind the devil. Do you hate yourself? You got to forgive yourself or he won't come out. Do you hate someone else? He won't come out. You got to forgive someone. In the name of Jesus, I turn my back on the occult and cursed things. I apologize for ripping people off. I apologize for hurting people. You cannot glaze over and gloss over some sin in which you've been committing. You've got to confess your sins. Then he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Count them against you no more. Confess them tonight. Confess them in Jesus' name. Get off drugs. Get off drugs. Get off drugs. Get off porn. Make your move. I don't care if you got to cut the internet off. I don't care what you got to do. Make your move. Demons that throw fits like this that you're hearing in the background is a decade of smoking crack cocaine. Smashing people, beating people, hurting people. Layers and layers of spirits come upon you. If you won't fight them, the layers won't even begin to peel away. They'll all lock arms and stand against you in the name of Jesus. You stand face to face and you oppose them. You oppose them in Jesus' name. God bless you, streamers. I love you. I pray healing power would come upon you. I pray healing power would come upon you. What are we praying for tonight? How do we how do we go through here and pray adequately? What, what's our 